So my name is Polly Saltmarsh. I'm a paintings conservator here at the gallery and behind me is the portrait of Mary I by Hans Ueth. Techniques we've used, we've tried to replicate them as closely as possible to um, what we know of how Tudor art was made. So we've prepared the panel using um, chalk priming layers. So when you're making a painting, the first step really is to lay out your composition. An artist did this in a number of ways. Often the initial step would be a sitting with the um, sitter, the person in the portrait, and it would be probably a very limited period of time. So in that time you might make a drawing, and from that drawing you could use that as a pattern. If there was a popular composition or a sitter that people wanted numerous portraits of, they could reuse these patterns. And the transfer process is the method of putting that pattern onto your wooden panel, basically, before you start painting. And what we see in the Mary I painting is we think there is a transfer process, so we see some very well-drawn, carefully drawn lines, but in other areas they're very free, freely handled, and you can see that in the area of the rose that she's holding, as well in her um, sleeves, where the artist is not so much necessarily following a pattern, but is being a bit more loose and free. So you can see there's a sort of difference in the mark making being made that helps us understand how it was created. The paints were ground, so using a traditional kind of grinding on a flat surface, so using linseed oil and then adding in the dry pigments and then grinding the pigments together. So you want every single particle of the pigment to be coated in oil so you get a beautiful um, uniform film. So the pigments that I've used, I've tried to find the most authentic pigments you can get today. Some of the other pigments would have come from all over the world. We've also used earth pigments, so these are pigments that literally, as the name suggests, come from the earth. So a lot of the yellow ochres um, are clay-like materials, and we also have a lot of browns that come from the earth. And again, these are very common today. They're still readily available in shops. In many of the paints that you buy will have earth pigments because it's cheap. When we were looking at the painting and sort of technical analysis, we looked with the microscope, we also took cross sections. So we have an understanding of how the artists have built up the paint layers in this painting. And in the reconstruction, I wanted to be faithful to how they've been applied. One of the really interesting things in this painting is how the green curtain fabric has been created. And the artist has laid in quite a dark gray tone in the background, covering all the areas that we now see green fabric. And over the top of that is laid in a copper green glaze. So a glaze is where there's a lot more medium. So it's much more translucent layer. So when you lay that in over the gray under layer, you really get this intensity of modulation between light and darks and you get the highlights. And it's one thing when you're looking at the paintings and understanding it, when you actually try it out yourself and recreate it, you get a much better idea for how it handles and feels and what you can achieve with those different techniques. Making the portrait, um, I've learned a lot about um, using these methods. Again, we look at these paintings all the time, we understand the materials and techniques and theory, but when you're actually doing it hands-on, you learn so much. The thing I've learned most is it's really hard to paint on this scale. It's a really tiny painting. I was using brushes that I use in my day-to-day -day job as a conservator, which are the finest brushes you can buy, and they're still almost too big. So there's so much skill used in trying to create something on this scale. That's my takeaway, that it's really difficult. 